For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Cuba is under attack. Yes, Cuba is reeling under brutal economic and commercial warfare orchestrated by the United States of America. A new wave of sanctions have been unleashed, which further tighten the six-decade-old US blockade against Cuba. Why? Because Cuba has been resisting the American imperialist project since 1959. First, when the Cuban Revolution overthrew the US-backed dictatorship regime of Fulgencio Batista in 1959, and then again in 1961, when Cuba, under the leadership of Fidel Castro, defeated the Central Intelligence Agency-sponsored invasion at the Bay of Pigs. In April 2019, US President Donald Trump and his hawks, John Bolton and Mike Pompeo, activated Title III of the Helms-Burton Act, basically Stage Three of the brutal blockade. The Trump administration also announced that it is reimposing limits on the amount of money that Cuban Americans can send to relatives on the island, as well as ordering new restrictions on travel to Cuba by US citizens. Such actions disregard the majority view of Americans whose interest to know Cuba and exercise their right to travel was proved by the 650,000 US travelers who visited the island nation in 2018, along with half a million Cubans residing in the United States. In March 2018, a United Nations agency said that an unjust US financial and trade embargo on Cuba had cost the country's economy $130 billion over nearly six decades. So what is the Helms-Burton Act? To understand, let's revisit some history. In 1996, strengthening and internationalizing its anti-Cuba actions, US President William Clinton signed the Public Act No. 104 to 114 titled the Cuban Liberty and Democratic Act of 1996. This act is commonly known as the Helms-Burton Act because of the names of its Republican sponsors, North Carolina Senator Jesse Helms and Indiana Representative Dan Burton. The aim of this act was evident, topple the socialist government in Cuba and establish American dominance. The Helms-Burton Act is composed of four titles. Title I aims to internationally strengthen application of the blockade and economic sanctions against Cuba. Title II establishes a sort of political transition plan in Cuba and a plan for US intervention in the future of the country. Title III proposes that persons claiming to own holdings that were nationalized or expropriated in Cuba, including persons who at that time were not American citizens, must be protected. Therefore, it establishes a group of rules that include the possibility of filing lawsuits in US courts against entities trafficking with or doing business with these nationalized holdings. The possibility of suing the beneficiaries of the trafficking has been suspended consistently from 1996 until the present. Title IV prohibits entry of executives and their families and of owners of entities trafficking with nationalized or expropriated holdings into the United States. Before the Trump government, since 1996, US presidents had made use of their executive prerogative to suspend application of Title III every six months. In April, Trump only suspended the title for two weeks leading up to May, but allowed litigations. If Title III of the Hems burton Act is applied, all Cuban citizens and every community in the country would witness lawsuits being filed in US courts against ownership of the homes they are occupying against the schools attended by their children, against the polyclinics where they get medical care, and against the land on which they build their neighborhoods. These brutal economic sanctions continue against Cuba, despite member states of the United Nations almost unanimously calling for lifting the US-imposed blockade. The United States supports the Monroe Doctrine openly, through which it tries to deny the sovereignty and the right to self-determination of every nation of the Global South. Cubans are saying no to the sanctions. Latin America is saying no to the sanctions. The world is saying no to the sanctions. Cantar, que vamos a